It's difficult to define the web because it isn't a technology you can actually put your hands on. It's just a set of agreements, of uh, standards. Uh, it's made up of two pieces, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Proto Protocol, um, and that is a set of agreements about how documents on the web can be asked for from a server uh, by a client and how they're delivered at HTML, and that's a set of expectations for how tags are used in a text document. A lot of the tags we use are the same ones that Tim Berners-Lee used when he created uh, HTML um, over a period ending in the early 1990s. By the mid-1990s, the web had become largely commercialized, and there was the emergence of the browser wars. And each browser, in an Internet Explorer was particularly bad on this front, created their own tags and their own expectations about what the HTML should look like. So you had to create your own HTML for Internet Explorer and then a set of HTML for, say, Netscape Navigator and another one for Opera or for Firefox. And it became a mess. It became almost impossible to create a standards-based website. You saw things like this site best viewed in Internet Explorer, and it forced people to view it in particular ways. Over the last, say, five or six years especially, there's been a strong return to the idea of web standards. The W3C is the organization that promulgates these standards. The current standard is HTML 4.01 along with XHTML1. We're not using those. We're working with a, an experimental standard, one that has not been accepted fully yet, called HTML5. Even though it's not been accepted, it's widely, many pieces of it are widely interpreted by most browsers, and so um, I feel it's safe to go ahead and move toward using HTML, many of the HTML standard, 5 standards already. Um, you can check to see whether you're following those standards by going to a markup validation service that w W3C offers. Um, you can upload your HTML directly if you want. So here's a piece of a snippet that we've been working on in one of the other tutorials, and you'll see that I've passed and that this checks out as HTML5, which is great. There are a couple of warnings here. Generally, warnings are not anything to be scared by. In this case, it's basically saying that um, this is an experimental validator because it's HTML5, for example. If you look at some of the uh, websites out on the web, say Facebook, for example, you'll see that it comes up with a fairly large number of errors. And you might say, OK, if Facebook is breaking the rules, then why do I have to follow them? There's some very good reasons to get as close to uh, the standards as possible. For one thing, it keeps the web free, not just free as in beer, but also free as in speech. That is, it allows people to make use of the web without having to pay for proprietary kinds of software. It also uh, allows for people to access the web with a very wide variety of technologies, and things like search engines can more easily parse the material that you put on the web. And it allows access for the widest possible variety of people, that is, those who may have visual impairments or other impairments, or who may approach knowledge in a different kind of way, can then access the knowledge in the way that makes sense best for them. There's also validators that are usable as plugins to Firefox. But however you find out about whether your document is valid, I think it's really important that you do your best as a professional to adhere to the web standards.